it's an awkward one. What's up? It's a frontier update. I wish I was as tall, but I don't because being a compact fella, you can get all the movements in these things we build. Look at this. This is a OG like Christmas housing. This used to be in all the old race trucks, like all the, like the classic Herbst trucks or like, you know, when Scott Steinberger had a Herbst truck, like that's where you'd see a Christmas. Uh, I think even some of the older pre-runners would have this stuff, but that's what this is. This is James's Frontier housing. Um, something to think about with this thing too is this is our powder coat color for all of the suspension or the running gear or the landing gear or whatever you want to call it. It still has dust on it. That's all it takes, dude. I'm telling you, it takes like three days and we're dusted on stuff, especially being in a small studio. Uh, but today's episode is going to be talking about the frontier. This is a, this will be a good episode. Um, I want to dive into this a little bit and I haven't covered so much of the sacrifice part of this thing. And I, you know, like it, it gives me a weird thing already because I talk about the spec truck and that being a sacrifice. And, and I go, geez, how many of these things are you doing where it turns into this bullshit? And it's, this is not that, but James had this truck just like, let me get, I'm gonna get this quick story out to get you guys in intact with where I'm at with it right now. Uh, if you wanted to like see it, you can see it back here just for a second. Small little fella. I've known James for, I want to say 12 years. Uh, him and I, like James was heavily involved with Dirt Alliance before everybody started Terra Crew. Um, and his, this Frontier was the staple, like it was part of who he was. Um, this is, he got this thing as a bone stock gardener truck. And you know, he did, he did all the typical like steps that a lot of guys building off-road trucks and pre-run trucks take before they get to this. This is where you end up if you're like pushing your shit and you want it to go as fast as possible through the big holes. You, you end up in this situation. Um, but everybody seems to bite it off where they put a front kit on their truck. You know, they get the starter kit, they get like the front and rear glass, don't paint it, put the front kit on, like Devers, bed cage, cage, back half, <sighs> center mount, tube chassis, big parts, big hubs, all the stuff. Like it's just bigger shocks, it keeps going. I know the recipe now, and that's what we're fortunate enough, like most all of our cars that we build in here, they're all on that perfect recipe where they're not in a position where they're gonna come back in for upgrades because we're building these things to where they're gonna go out and fuck. And James has gone through this thing and I, I remember <clears throat> he, like he was having struggles this thing was going to different shops and James is on a teacher budget. He doesn't have a bunch of money. So a lot of this stuff is like getting deals and trying to have people help him out. And you know, it's worked for a long time, but you got to think when you're building something like this, this is a, this is a high budget situation. And so you think, well, dude, it's taken 10 years and why isn't it done and all this bullshit. And it's like, you got to think for him to be able to even push something like this, that's way out of the wheelhouse of attainment. I don't know if that's a word. Uh, it takes that kind of time. And it also like every time, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but when you get like homie hookups or you're getting buddies doing stuff or you're doing it on the side or, you know, like it's people are doing shit for free. Guess where you are on the list of priority. So that's happened like over and over with different, different builders or different shops or people breaking off little bits of work here and there. And, and when we got in this position here, where we opened up shop, it was something where I told James, I go, hey, get the truck, bring it to me. I will finish it for you, like at whatever cost I got to do. Now, when I said that, I don't know if that necessarily registered at whatever cost, um, but my commitment 
never went away. And so, you know, it's like, that's the thing I don't talk about is when people want to say like, dude, how come it's taking so long? Or how come he's not working on it or this and that? It is because this thing has been a huge sacrifice for James and I both, you know, like it, if there's money to work on it, we work on it. If there's not money, there's not. Or if I need to be working on it and then it got to catch up and it's just, it's something we've made work this far. Um, and I've, I've treated this vehicle as it's my own, uh, you know, and what I mean by that is like contacting Baja Designs, contacting Safecraft, contacting PRP, like having, having all these people help us with this thing. That's me like on the phone talking to the owners of companies and um, representing this thing. And, and, you know, with James, I think it's been such a drawn out process that it's, he's like at this point where it's hard for him to, to even see the finish. And I am so close on this thing. And my guys are so close on this thing that feel a little on our own with it. And, <laughs> um, especially like being at this form of completion, like we're danger close to getting this thing out for wiring. Um, uh, and like, you know, James hasn't came up and seen this thing since it got powder coated. Uh, it's one of these where I'm just, I'm taking, I'm taking the lead on this and we're going to finish it as a team here, um, regardless. So that's where it's at. Uh, we, we went down to quality powder in San Diego and Sean is the owner there. And like, I worked with Sean on this and this whole entire car is powder coated. We can talk about that first. Like I was saying, I don't think we've had an update on this thing since it's been powder coated. Uh, I had some of it on my Instagram. We worked with Sean at Quality Powder in SD. Uh, he killed it on this. And I mean, like, you get weird about the powder coat on stuff, especially doing an entire cab, because you're just like, how are you gonna get everything? And they do, they have a way where they sandblast this thing and they get everything. Like there's, there is, I mean, you can see that's inside the door sill. Like, I don't, I don't get it, but this color, um, we chose like a, a heavy contrast color, like we showed the axle. So trailing arms, upper links, sway bar links, upper and lower arms in the front, uh, uprights, steering tie rods, all that stuff is going to be that same gray we have. But this car, the color itself, this is like, they call this an anodized black. And it is like just such a muted flat. And I think it's amazing for adding contrast because it's still like, it's not gonna be too flashy, but it does give that contrast. If you look at like, everything's gloss black uh, as a complimentary. So same with the fuel cell, like that whole can is gloss black. All the cooler shrouding, gloss black battery trays, the sway bar arms. So this is, this is like our assembly time. Um, we're working with Chris at Heat Shield Products and I have a bunch of content to share with you guys with him. Uh, he came up and he got this whole thing kind of dialed in as far as like everything we want to run on it to suppress and deflect heat and also sound. Um, one really good example is if you see the floors, Under here is, there's no treatment, right? And you get a lot of that. You can like now keep that in mind. That's direct floor here, right? So that's, now, this is the DB armor they sell. Right. And that's what you got under there. So that's one section. Now, the sticky shield is what's in this entire 
uh, you know, trans and engine tunnel. You can see it back there. It's the perforated stuff. Um, and, and that this whole entire thing, that was the first order of business here, is before we had the engine and the trans in, we got this whole tunnel laced up. And we'll be able to see it from the back even better. There's the money. So now you can get an idea. Um, the goal with this is to, you know, a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of that car, especially on the frontier, like the tin work on the inside is the same tin work as the backside. And, and we're gonna have a, a full belly pan spanning the whole underside of this car. But I didn't wanna put a bunch of, of like the sound deadening or the, or the heat deflection material in the cab. Like I wanted it to still look raw and just have like grip tape where your feet go and be something almost where you could hose it out or pressure wash it out. And then it's not, there's, there won't be any carpet or upholstery like that. But just not having all this kind of treatment on the inside was the goal. So we are able to get wins because the, you know, there will be protection from the elements because there'll be a complete belly pan on this thing. Uh, all the way through. You can see some of the hard line done. And you can see the fire suppression. There's two 10 pound safe craft bottles here hanging out. Those mounts are really good. The guys did an awesome job on these. But every square inch of this car is powder coated. Uh, and the, what this does for longevity, this thing keeps this thing from rusting and eroding. Uh, you know, it just, it, the cleanup is so much easier when the thing's powder coated. Really quick, so heat shield stuff. I told you guys we're gonna have content like specifically based on their stuff, and that's what I want. I wanna do a whole separate episode uh, with heat shield with, with Chris, um, and, and I wanna show you guys like that, that DB shield that I mentioned where I knocked on the stuff, that's this. Now, the, you know, what we don't wanna say is Dynamat, but this is very thin, and that's the when you get this stuff. If you have other competitor stuff, it's so heavy and if you've ever used it, like you pile it on and think about when you get a box, it's 50 pounds or something. So this is very lightweight, it still gets the job done. Um, and then this is our sticky shield. This is what you always see on like a lot of motorsports cars. You know, foam padding, uh, real aluminum and it's perforated. And that's like, you know, that's what this thing will be laced with. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll go into the heat shield products and do a separate episode. But really, I just wanted to like, so you can see boots on the ground, what we're using. When the exhaust is finaled in there, there's still some V bands that aren't welded. Um, we're like the, so to touch on that quick tangent, building exhaust through trials and tribulations, fuck ups. I've built exhaust systems and I'm using V bands and like billet, billet collars and all the nice stuff. And you'll go through and you'll have everything tacked. You'll weld all the exhaust and then you'll weld all the V band rings and you'll realize stuff tweaked just enough or it doesn't seat properly on the V band. So one of the things that I do like to help is we build all the exhaust out, tack the V-bands where we want, weld all the exhaust, and then if we need to make an adjustment, we can just adjust where the V-band area is and seal it. So the headers still have tacked V-bands, just as a Hail Mary, so we can get all that stuff bolted in, and if it's a little bit off from all the welding, we can just like knock it into place and it seals. After we're done with that, header wrap. Header wrap, all on the headers, all on the exhaust, on the X-pipe. Um, sticky shield on the bottom of the fuel cell anywhere like it's this will be a walking showcase of heat shield products anywhere we can get it and it's again it's such a small car because it's literally narrower than a ranger like a ford ranger where it's just all that heat it's a big ls it's 24 inches back then it's exhaust running through the tunnel too it, there's tons of heat and it just needs to be dissipated the best it can or deflected this is your classic spark plug boots uh, and then the other stuff that we've absolutely used all of is the hot rod sleeve um, and that you know again we'll cover all this stuff and when i'm there i'll film it but all of our plumbing will have the hot rod sleeve with shrink wrap on the ends so just like you guys know, this is there's there's people that have been on board with us throughout the process, like Safecraft, PRP, Baja Designs, um, and now it's turning into Heat Shield jumping on board and helping out with the finish and the assembly on this. Thing.
just really impressed. Alex, when Alex started, he didn't know how to do any kind of plumbing, um, especially like running hard line and routing hard line. And he's found design and a craft in that. And I feel like with plumbing, that's something that you should incorporate. If you're a shop like doing big builds, you shouldn't send that thing out for plumbing because there's such, you should, that should be something that's done in house because it's, it's an acquired like design that has to flow with the car. And you know, like Alex has got this pretty dialed. Like all of this line is just so clean. And same with, this is the fire suppression in here. I'm gonna put the light in. You can see the fire suppression. So everything's bulkheaded, right? So like your back wall, look at all of the lines for the rear. That's fuel, that's oil, and that's your brakes. All of that tied in. And then up here, this pops back out. This is your fire suppression. You have three nozzles per bottle. So you have six nozzles total. And you can just see how tidy all this is. So what you're doing essentially is you're covering your rear occupants with a spray. You're covering your front occupants with a spray. You're covering driver and passenger footwell. You're covering the converter area of the trans. And then you're coming through and you're covering the whole engine bay um, and a lot of the front accessory. Most of like, that's the thing is we're gonna have a guy come in and help. Um, he'll be a new hire pretty much to work specifically on the frontier. Um, if it works out and we can have him on some other stuff, then we'll explore that later. But right now, like the, the guys are slammed on projects and we have clients that are expecting work to be done all the time. So for James, you know, and especially with, with his budget or limited budget, uh, we need to, you know, get someone else in here that can be more on his payroll than on our payroll and just dedicated to work on the car. But Alex started, Colin's, Colin actually started first uh, with assembling some of this and putting it together and then Alex took over um, and their parts are done. Now, really what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be just directing our, our new help. But you know, you can see there's a lot of detail going on in here, um, all the hardware is all torque sealed, everything is Loctite, uh, anti-seize, you know, going together how it should. Something that's really important for assembly with stuff like this, I love this view. There's something about this that's like a, like a special ops, you know, or like a Blackbird vibe. Um, something that's really important with this is like making sure you're, thinking of the order that this stuff's going together. Um, you can really put yourself in a hole, just like building yourself in a hole with assembly, where if you're not, it, this kind of requires building it from the inside out. Um, and you know, it's the same as when you construct it, you're assembling it in a very similar fashion. And it, as much as you want to just jump the gun and put stuff on or hang the shocks or whatever, it's about getting all the details right uh, before any of that stuff goes down. You can see all, header gaskets, ARP hardware, you know, you can see all the torque seal. But everything's going together proper. Uh, you can see the high pressure lines, low pressure lines. Everything has this hot rod shield on it, which is also a heat shield products treatment. So every single line in this car, even these ones that aren't done yet, will have uh, heat shield products, hot rod sleeve or hot rod shield on there. I think it's called hot rod sleeve. But there's quite a bit of stuff here. You know, we have pallets on pallets of powder coated parts. Uh, the, like I said, the, the whole entire car is powder coated. There is nothing that's painted. The only thing that would be painted would be like the factory doors. Uh, if you guys are wondering about colors on this thing, well, we're not gonna stray from what's OG. So definitely red cab, um, red doors, 
and red glass, uh, black wheels, you know, just very traditional to what this car has always been and not straying from that. The only thing that's gonna be different is just like we talked about, just the axle housing and, and the suspension component. So anything that's moving and swinging on the car would be this color. And you can see more of Alex's work. It's a pleasure to have a skill set develop like this. Like I just, I couldn't ask for more. So that's our update for this thing. Uh, really, it's just gonna be a matter of putting it together. Uh, I wanna say it's gonna be a solid four weeks of getting this thing where it needs to be and then we'll be taking it to wiring. Um, if you guys have questions, comments, let me know. It's just, again, mid process, we'll check back in. Like, comment, subscribe.